All right, betting above the rim here on a Saturday morning. John Shames, James Young, the James and Shames show. New time slot, but the same beautiful faces this week. And we're going to be doing it for another month here. Over the course of the next month, JY and I will be with you every Saturday. And we're kicking things off on this 8 a.m. time slot right here, right now. James and Shames, what up, JY? Great to be with you, brother. Man, it's a little earlier. I had my coffee. A lot of stuff went down in NBA. Two hours. Hope we got enough time, brother. Oh, man, you said it, JY. There is so much for us to, to discuss. Free agency starting this week. And, JY, it's funny. It's, it's almost like our, our, our first off-season show is going to be the most packed and the most that we have to get to. But that's kind of the nature of the beast in the NBA. The regular season is, is great. The postseason is fantastic. But free agency, that is on another level, and that's what sets the NBA apart from the rest of all these leagues. So a jam-packed week, some, some stars requesting trades, some guys opting in, some guys going elsewhere, and we will, we will start breaking down everything right here, right now. So, J.Y., let's begin at the beginning of this week. What started the, the first domino of this free agency cycle, and that was Kyrie Irving eventually opting into his contract for the Brooklyn Nets. But, J.Y., for a while there, it seemed like Kyrie was going to be on his way out of town fast, and we didn't know if that meant Durant was going to stay, if that meant Durant was going to go. And then later this week, we got our answer when Kevin Durant asks for a trade from the Brooklyn Nets teeing up what could be one of the greatest trades and one of the biggest names to ever be traded, not only in the NBA, but in any sport, JY. A wild week with Kevin Durant now, of course, at the top of the headlines board. Before we dive into the trades and some of these free agency signings, what are your early thoughts on the Kevin Durant saga in Brooklyn? I'm not surprised. You know, this has been kind of his MO. When things don't go right, he goes the other way. But if you really think about what just went on, with the Nets, it was just a mess. It was a mess all last year with Kyrie and the vaccination. He couldn't play on the road. Then he can play on the road, and then Harden asks out. The telltale sign, James, was the fact that there was no communication by either Kyrie or KD with the Nets from the end of the season. That is trouble, especially when a franchise gave so much attention and basically let those two run the show. So I'm not surprised that this breakup has happened. Maybe the events happen in different orders, but the, the fact that this team is being broken up, not surprised one bit. JY, I was a little surprised to see that as soon as Kyrie opts in, Durant asks out. I thought that was an interesting timing of that sequence. And then for, to hear the report, too, that comes out that the two might be interested in still playing together, just not for the Brooklyn Nets. That one is really interesting to me. You do wonder if maybe there was some, some serious friction between Joe Tsai, the owner of the Nets, and Kyrie Irving, and if maybe Kevin Durant is picking his side in that battle. Just speculation, of course. We do not know anything about that for sure. But reading the, the tea leaves of what's been going on, JY, that's kind of my take on the situation. But elsewhere around the NBA, there is a ton of other stuff going on as well. Stars on the move. Rudy Gobert traded yesterday, along with DeJounte Murray earlier this week. And Malcolm Brogdon was another big move yesterday. And we're going to break down all three of those trades later in this hour. But JY, really quickly here, Rudy Gobert, you like that fit for Minnesota? I think it does actually work. So I, we'll see how it will pan out um, during the course of this, this season uh, as we work in our, welcome in our radio audience, uh, the James and Shames show, betting above the rim, uh, talking about Rudy Gobert and the fit uh, with Minnesota. Now, you have to think about this. Rudy Gobert is a rim protector shot blocker. For a team like Minnesota, they need better protection at the rim. And what they need is they also need to keep Carl Anthony Towns out of foul trouble. Remember, folks, Town steps out is probably one of the best, if not the best, big shooting man uh, in the history of the NBA. So to have him go to the perimeter and keep him out of foul trouble defensively, that is a really good move by Minnesota. They didn't give up a ton. You know, the Kessler kid was going to plug into that position uh, for Minnesota. Now he goes to Utah as one of the center pieces. But you, at least for Utah, we've talked about it. The, that run is done. Those guys are leaving. Quinn Snyder is gone. You know, obviously the first domino is Gobert. I don't care what anybody says. Teams are calling on Donovan Mitchell. He should be moved. Mike Conley should be moved. And if I am Utah, I'm trying to get as many picks as possible because I have to almost 
restart the entire franchise. Yeah, for sure. We're going to be very interesting to keep an eye on Donovan Mitchell over the next couple of weeks and what might happen with him and the Utah Jazz. I agree with you, Coach. Utah did fantastic in this trade. I'll give you my full thoughts on the Minnesota side of things later, but a couple more big headlines to get to before we hit the break here in just about a minute. We have Jalen Brunson, of course, Coach, going to the New York Knicks. $104 million for four years. A fat bag for Jalen Brunson. A couple other significant free agency signings we want to mention. John Wall signs with the LA Clippers earlier this week. Finally, that saga with the Houston Rockets coming to an end. Wall joining a contender, which is what he's wanted for a long time, and now getting the chance to play alongside Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, potentially forming a nice little trio down there. And then P.J. Tucker, J.Y., instrumental part of the Miami Heat's run this season and, and as well with the Milwaukee Bucks when they won a title. Signing with the Philadelphia 76ers. Three years, $30 million for a 37-year-old P.J. Tucker. That's going to be interesting, and we're going to keep our eye on that as well. And, of course, when stuff like this happens, the markets move like crazy too. You know we will be keyed into that, giving you the value spots right now. But first, we're going to do some speculation. Where are KD and Kyrie going? Find out after the break. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take the inside lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. The early line. For two Pac-12 teams on the West Coast to be in the Big Ten, it doesn't even compute or make any sense until you remember it's about the almighty dollar. So now, where does that leave the Pac-12 at this point? Your two flagship programs now are in the Big Ten. You're going to fold up. There is no more Power Five. We are at best a Power Four. At best, at best a Power Four. Because the Pac-12 is done. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Big Ten was looking at deals that would pay them out $1.1 billion with a B on an annual basis. That was before USC and UCLA joined the conference for 2024 yesterday. And I think it could potentially top $3 billion. I really believe that once we get started in 2024, Ben, because you're talking about some of the most recognizable names in terms of the sport. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Pat McAfee Show. It's better to be in your skate than it is your sneakers because you don't, your, your foot's going like this, right? It's, it, it immobilizes your foot in your boot. It's a I'm cast. Like, oh, this dude's good to go. And we're watching the warm ups, trying to get a feel. This guy's flying around like nothing. I mean, he's, he's for sure. I, I've been told there's like at least five or six guys that have broken feet. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's like, it's nuts, man. They're blocking shots. The Sports Grid Net.
All right, cooking on a Saturday morning here, betting above the rim. John Shames and James Young here for the full two hours, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time here on Sports Grid TV, Sirius XM Channel 159. Thank you all for being here as we start to break down some of the biggest news this week around the association and, of course, what everyone's eyes are on, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and the entire Brooklyn Nets mess. I know JY's got a lot of thoughts about it. And JY, what we're going to do here is go through some of our our favorite potential landing spots for both Kyrie and KD, but starting with the big guy, of course, because that's who everyone's attention is on right now. So JY, we made a board here with a couple of teams, uh, you know, some sleeper teams, some places to watch, and KD's preferred destinations as well. At the top of his list, as reported by Brian Windhorst this week, uh, James, is the Phoenix Suns for Kevin Durant, followed by the Miami Heat, Vince Goodwill saying Miami Heat at number two on KD's list. And then you look at some teams like Chicago, Philadelphia, those teams have been floated out here as well. And the Portland Trailblazers are a team I have my eye on as well. But coach, before we dive into some of the fun sleepers here, where do you think Durant is going to end up from a perspective of fit and keeping in mind the teams need the assets to be able to acquire him? Well, if you listen in, in the Tri-State area locally around here where, where Shames and I both are, you know, there's some reports coming out of the New York Post this morning talking about that they want a young star slash soon-to-be all-star, another starter, and multiple first-round draft picks. So you start going through the list, and Phoenix honestly makes the most sense. One, DeAndre Ayton. Two, you can either package that with uh, either Cam Johnson – or Mikel Bridges. From there, you have the first-round draft pick. So a place like Phoenix, if you look, folks, they were 10-1 to 1 to win the title. As soon as he requested a trade and he was number one, they went to 6-1 to 1 right away. So that shows how the market moved, and them anticipating that that is one of the preferred destinations for KD. And KD, along with Devin Booker, and CP3, you can get a center. They don't really use it that much. That's why DeAndre Ayton and them have been fighting and he wants to leave. And then whoever's left over between Bridges and Cam Johnson, that person goes uh, to the other, to the small forward spot. Then you look at the bench. They still got Larry Shaman. Frank Kaminsky should be coming back. You know, so they have enough guys um, that should help them, you know, in regards to staying competitive. So, Losing two starters, yes, but they're already going to lose eight. So to me, it's almost like losing Bridges or Johnson plus the picks for KD because everybody figured DeAndre Ayton was leaving a free agency. Yeah, I agree. I think if you throw Bridges in there, obviously it's Kevin Durant, right? So there's really no package that's too much for KD. But if I'm the Suns, I'm trying to hang on to Mikhail Bridges over Cam Johnson. Personally, you know, I know Cam Johnson, probably a slightly better shooter, but Bridges with that length on the defensive end, I think that is such a key for them. Coach, let's flip it to the Eastern Conference. Miami Heat, a team that's been floated out for KD as well. I'm a little skeptical here. The fit obviously makes a lot of sense, right? Jimmy Butler and Kevin Durant. Jimmy has the ball in his hands. KD plays that off-ball score, uh, mobile scoring threat for the Miami Heat, which they desperately needed in the playoffs this year. But I don't really know what that package looked like. We were talking about uh, you know, during the break here that Ben Simmons and Bam Adebayo might have to get involved in this trade too. It could become more of a blockbuster than Miami really wants to make here for someone who is you know, still in his prime, let's say, but kind of approaching the tail end of that. You know, I'm not sure you'd want to part ways with Bam Adebayo, one of the premier young players in the league. What do you make of that, JY? Do you think that it'd be wise for Miami to go with Duran or should they just hang on to what they have here? Well, if you hear what's going on, Kevin Durant basically said in so many words, I want to pay with Bam, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. So there there goes there's the monkey wrench right off the bat that one of the centerpieces is Bam and Kevin Durant doesn't want to have that done. Now, here's where you have to look at. It's gonna pack is gonna be centered around Tyler Hero. Now, to me, Tyler Hero is a good player, but to me, he's not DeAndre Ayton. If you want to talk about centerpieces of a I trade. Agree. I think DeAndre Ayton has proved himself more in the NBA than Tyler Hero, who does look very, very fly on the sidelines when he's in that (laughs) Miami Vice gear. He's been shopping at the same store as our guy Joe Ranieri, but that's a story for another day. So who is it? Is it Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson? I mean, that's not better than 
Aiton and Bridges, let's be honest. And then there's always a thought process of, does Miami, uh, does a team like Brooklyn really get salty enough and say, well, we don't want to trade KD within the Eastern Conference. I, I hope to God that that is not the case. Because if, if, if that's what Brooklyn's doing, you've just cut off half the league as you can trade Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving to. So let's hope they get the best offer. But to me, still, the, the offer from Phoenix, if it's constructed what we talked about, is better than I think what Miami can offer because KD doesn't want Bam to leave. I agree with you, Coach. And it's also interesting when you think about, right, how much leverage does KD really have in this position right now? Because, yes, he's saying he wants to request a trade, but he's, got, he's under contract for another four years. He just signed a massive extension. So you have to think that, that KD realizes that, you know, while he might want to go to the Phoenix Suns or the Miami Heat, he's basically just saying he's going to one of the other 29 teams here in the NBA, which kind of brings us to the more fun part of this Uh, of this segment coach with Kevin Durant and I want to talk about some of the sleeper teams we saw Portland Chicago Philly on there some teams that have been floated out as well I want to get a little creative here coach my favorite team to see Kevin Durant on I think would be the New Orleans Pelicans I don't know what it looks like to, to get a deal done there but imagine something around Ingram maybe the Nets can bring in Ingram bring in a young player you know who is often been compared to Kevin Durant, although I think at this point we are comfortable saying that they are completely different players. But Ingram, a great player, can operate with the ball in his hands. I mean, the Pelicans would be probably my favorite team on that list. Of course, you got to throw in the Lakers, the Hawks, even the Raptors as a sleeper team coach. But who do you got your eye on as maybe one of the dark horse uh, teams to get KD here? When you really look at it, Shames, it has to be the team that I love is New Orleans. Once Zion signed the Supermax, Okay, that to me signaled to me that you can now move Kevin Durant into that spot with New Orleans and have Brandon Ingram as the centerpiece of any sort of trade for uh, KD. So, you know, looking at the numbers, you know, Brandon Ingram's uh, salary is about thirty one million dollars. KD's, you know, uh, salary is somewhere in the neighborhood of forty four million dollars so obviously you Mm. can't do that one for one you got to find another piece I mean if you do that and Devontae Graham you try to do that trade Devontae Graham Brandon Ingram a host of picks to the New Orleans Pelicans for KD that trade does line up with salary cap implications uh three years left on both Ingram's and Devontae Graham's contract four on KD's so you know I don't know if you want to adjust it and maybe take out Devontae Graham and try to get guys that are on expiring deals. Maybe that's something to Mm -hmm. work, a Jackson Hayes, so on and so forth. But if you really look at it, can you imagine – I mean, come on, bro. Could you imagine KD with Zion and McCollum, and then you hold on to Valanchunas, and you got Jackson (laughs) Hayes and Larry Nance – and Hernan Gomez and Trey Murphy. I mean, Lord, I'm, man, I'm kidding. Hey, someone got to turn the AC up in there because Jay White hot <laughs> talking about KD going to the Pelicans. Dude, that's what I'm saying. It would be so electric. I have i don't know if I've rooted for another team to land a big free agent this hard in a long time. So that's KD. Very quickly, Coach, I do want to talk about Kyrie in the last 45 seconds here before the break. We could see Kyrie going to the L.A. Lakers. That's a team that's been floated out. Not a lot of interest around the league right now. It's kind of looking like it's going to be the Lakers or maybe the Mavericks for Kyrie. Some sleeper teams. I can't believe the Clippers haven't been floated out. Frizo and I were talking about that yesterday. And then, of course, you got to consider Kyrie might retire. This is a guy who said at 31 years old, he was thinking of retiring. That was maybe a few, five, six years ago. And now we are at that point where his value in the league is not even close to to what it once was does anyone even want Kyrie Irving we'll see I suspect he'll be on a roster next season but we had to throw the possibility out there more free agency up next after the break Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll see how it plays out. Buffalo's Football full right circle. 
all their chips Diamond the bets. The How dare they do what's fiscally responsible? Sixers betting above are they a fraud the rim. or are they not a fraud? Did you watch that game a couple of nights ago? Well, Steph Curry was out there begging for his life. Someone come please help me. Fred Van Bleek giving me the In-game business. In-game live the all access. You can take the money line. And they only had to go to San Jose, too. It was small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it. Wow. In game live. Ben should be Prime really time. happy because his fraudulent conference got a couple extra teams in uh, instead of the pass. There he is. Boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The early line. If you're trading for Kevin Durant now, you're getting Kevin Durant for a few years still on the back end of his prime. Incredible stuff to drop down yesterday. Shakes the core of the NBA because it seems like, Kevin, there's four, five, or six teams now, quite honestly, if he gets traded to, go right up to the top of the standings at the FanDuel Sportsbook as the favorites to win the NBA championship. Only on Sports Grid. Sports professor Rick Carl inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute analyzing the Formula One deal. Amazon ran hard on getting the rights to Formula One in the U.S. ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus ran harder. $5 million rights fee extended and expanded to anywhere from 90 to 100 depending on what you're hearing. And the bottom line is this is going to be one of those mega promotional deals that ESPN does promote all over the U.S. and the world as they justify the expansion of Formula One. So at the end of the day, Formula One viewership up 36% this year. A huge deal. The ESPN deal will keep the momentum going. And Vegas, Miami, Austin, Montreal, and other cities all over North America, the presence with Formula One bigger than anybody might have expected. Sports for tomorrow. Sports News Minute. Man, I love the NBA offseason. My favorite time of the year, of course, the NBA Finals first, NBA offseason second. But what an awesome time we have on our hands here, JY. And there is so much for us to get to right now. Let's not waste any time. Let's dive into some of the trades that we saw, not just yesterday, but throughout the week. And we will start, although not sequentially, with the biggest trade on the board, JY. And that's Rudy Gobert getting traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves, teaming up with Carl Anthony Towns, the Stifle Tower, and the big cat working in tandem two legit seven footers to pair in the front court alongside anthony edwards they did trade away a lot of their wing depth coach but you bring in a defensive player of the year that's obviously going to turn some heads what do you make of this trade early on before we talk about the you know what was sent out from the minnesota standpoint talk to me a little bit more about this fit that you mentioned earlier with rudy gobert fitting into the minnesota timberwolves you know, with a, with a team like Minnesota Timberwolves, they struggled a little bit on the defensive end, especially protecting the rim. And their concern was someone like Carl Anthony Towns getting into foul trouble when he was at the center position. What this trade allows you to do, it allows to put Cat as a power forward, as a true pick-and-pop stretch four, with the capability to shoot the ball from three. And Big Rudy can hover around the basket where he can get O-boards and get putbacks. In regards to defensively, it also saves Cat from foul trouble by having Gobert be the rim protector, shot blocker, defensive rebound, and then uh, someone like a Cat can be a weak side rebounder, weak side shot blocker, and that's more benefit to him, and it keeps him out of foul trouble. So that's the way it works. Now, I know there's concern about the depth, but if I'm not mistaken, 
one of the, you know, really good sneaky free agent signings, Kyle Anderson went mm-hmm. to Minnesota. That is a good, smart play, almost a prerequisite for a trade because you swap him out for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, really good rebounder and defender. Kyle Anderson, underrated defender, really good. They call him slow-mo because he's from North Jersey. Uh, shout out to, to Coach Hurley uh, from St. Anthony's, his high school coach. But that guy, slow-mo, can really do a lot of things with the ball offensively, off the bounce. His shot is decent. It's a little funky. So you take out Vanderbilt, you put in Kyle Anderson, you take out Kessler, who just drafted, replace with Rudy Gobert. That's a big league upgrade for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think from a size perspective, you're looking at a lineup that could be absolutely massive, especially if you run Kyle Anderson in that like kind of wing guard hybrid spot, which he can play. He's a true five position type of player. He was a point guard coming out of college, JY, but he's kind of really settled more into that power forward role, but doing an excellent job. I do agree. That's a very good signing. I do wonder, though, I have some of the same concerns about Carl Anthony Towns at the four as I do with Anthony Davis as well, right? We think about how Anthony Davis has always wanted to play the four. LA has tried to bring in centers to play next to him as did New Orleans and it always seemed like he works better at the five just because from a matchup perspective that's how you abuse uh, guys on the offensive end right when you have someone with that size and that speed being able to move and shoot the, uh, space the floor as well with their shooting ability so coach do you make anything of you think Carl Anthony Towns at the four is going to be more effective than Carl Anthony Towns at the five is what I'm hearing here I, I do, and, and here's the thing you have to realize, James. You make a good point about Anthony Davis, but you're, it's apples and oranges. You know, when you look at someone like Anthony Davis, who shot, I do believe, 18% from three last year, 26% the year before that, he's never had a season where he shot over 34% from the three-point line. So that's a concern if you regards to playing, having someone – be a small ball or a stretch four, I would say. Now, if you go ahead and you look at someone like Carl Anthony Towns, as I pull up his stats here to take a look and see if this correlates, like I said, mm-hmm. cut this past season, 41%. Year before that, 39, yep. 41. His worst season shooting a three was his rookie season, 34.1%. That's the same as Anthony Davis' best shooting percentage. <laughs> So this does line up well for Minnesota. Now, the concern is, James, is can Carl Anthony Towns defend on the perimeter? That's where the concern would be uh, for Minnesota uh, if he has to go out and play and if you're a team that switches one through four on ball screens or you have an athletic wing uh, that he's got to stop from driving to the basket. But when it's all said and done, they're different players because Carl Anthony Towns – Maybe the best shooting big man in the history of the NBA. Yeah, coach, and we can't forget, too, Carl Anthony Towns won the three-point contest this year. He truly is a very elite shooter as well, and we have to remember that. Not just one of the best uh, three-point shooting big men in the league, but one of the best shooters in the league in general right now. And, coach, I do like the fit for Utah or for Minnesota. You're kind of selling me on that. But I I do have to think about this, too, from a future perspective. They, they sent out a lot of players in this deal. And as you said, Jared Vanderbilt, good player. Patrick Beverly, of course, an important part of what they did on the defensive end this season. And then Walker Kessler, too, right? Their first-round draft choice from this year. And then you add four first-round picks on top, or three first-round picks on top of that, too, unprotected, and one protected top five in 2029. That is a lot of draft capital to be sending out for a guy who... Yes, I understand he's a defensive player, a multiple-time defensive player of the year winner. But, Coach, there's some concerns about Rudy Gobert's ability to stay on the floor in the postseason. Um, I don't know if if that's worth the gamble and the the treasure chest of assets that uh, Minnesota had to deliver to Danny Ainge in Utah. You know know what it did, James? It sped up their window. See, I thought their window didn't start for another year or two. Their window is open now. Like, they got to make the move now. And you probably say it's about a three- to four-year window that they believe that they can have a chance to win with Gobert, with Cat, with Black Jesus. Now, we'll see what happens with D'Angelo Russell. There's been talking about him being on a trading block. We'll see what happens. 
Shout out to Anthony Edwards, by the way. Bro, you were great in Hustle. I mean, y'all haven't seen Hustle? Actually, I'm not going to plug Adam Sanders' movie. I'll do that on social media. <laughs> but anyway, I do think it, it, it's a good fit. Let's see what happens. But let's be honest, James. Are they better than the Warriors? No. Are they better than uh, the Grizzlies? I still don't think so, even though they took them to a big series. Are they better than Phoenix if they get uh, KD? No. So they're right there, they're – Denver's going to get back, you know, their two guys, yeah. Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., are they better than them? Probably not. Depends on what the Pelicans do. Are they better than the Pelicans? Maybe not. So all you've done is maybe said you're the fourth, the fifth best team in the Western Conference. We got to see some of those other guys in Minnesota take a big leap this year. I almost feel like their ceiling now becomes what the Jazz's ceiling has been for the past number of years, which is just absolutely hilarious to me if you think about it. So we will keep our eye on that for sure. And that's out there in the Western Conference, in the Eastern Conference, Coach. Two big trades this week. We might have to push one to the next segment here, but let's get your early thoughts on DeJounte Murray to the Atlanta Hawks for Danilo Gallinari and a couple picks. I know last week when you were talking with Kevin, you were a little skeptical on the fit with Murray and Trey Young. I actually share your sentiment on that, Coach. I think Murray's lack of shooting ability is going to be an issue. I know there's all this talk about, oh, let's get the ball out of Trey Young's hands. We don't know what that looks like. We have not seen that at the NBA level before, and this is a guy who has been known as one of the premier uh, scorers in terms of his efficiency, what he can do with the ball, not his field goal percentage, but his points per possession and the offense that he adds to the court when the ball in his hands. We don't know what it's going to look like with him having a lower usage rate, trying to play off ball and potentially getting played very physical when he plays off ball too. So coach, now that we've had a couple days and maybe almost a week for this to settle now, are you any more warmed up to DeJounte Murray's fit in Atlanta? I actually am. And I am because I think that Trey gets, that's a team that it's Trey and everyone else. They don't have a second score. And they don't have anybody that can create pressure off the bounce and create shots for himself and other people. DeJounte Murray, folks, look at his stats. His points, rebounds, and assists have gone up every year since he came into the association to the point where he was a 28, 8, and 9 guy this past season for San Antonio. So it should be a dynamic backcourt. It should hide. Trey also on the defensive end of the floor. DeJounte Murray, one of the best defensive guards in the NBA and tall enough and physical enough that he could guard a one or a two. They're going to try and use Trey like the way they used Steph Curry. You saw Steph Curry at times as the point, and then you had other times that he came off the ball and they used him in that two-guard lineup. Kind of similar to what Dallas did with Brunson and Luka at times, taking Luka mm. off the ball and letting Brunson be the primary ball handler and let Trey be, uh, let uh, Luka be on that second side of the floor. They may try to do the same thing with Trey. But the key thing to me still is this. I still don't know what John Collins is doing there. They, they can move him. I don't know. That guy's enigmatic. I don't get it. I do like Capella. I think he's going to be okay. And I'm a big, big DeAndre Hunter fan. I think they got to get rid of John Collins is the next piece for the Atlanta Hawks. Coach, they're 55-1 to one right now to win the NBA title. They did move up a little bit. I think they were about 65-1 to one before this trade. And so a, a $10 of movement in their favor there, but still priced pretty low compared to the rest of the Eastern Conference. A fair price for them, or do you anticipate maybe we're going to see another move made by the Atlanta Hawks here, whether that be involving John Collins or not? I think there probably is another move, but if I were you, yeah, I would, I would sprinkle a couple of bucks on them uh, not to win the NBA uh, title, uh, but maybe look at them to win the Eastern Conference title. Right yep. now, they are, I believe, the eighth favorite at 25 to 1. Yeah. So I think that could be a play is take the Atlanta Hawks. Remember, folks, they were a game away from getting to the Eastern Conference Finals two years ago. It is crazy, Coach. you got to think about that playoff experience here as we think about the big stage. All right, more trade talk into some free agency. Keep it right here, betting above the rim. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll see how it plays out. Buffalo's Football going full right now. circle. All their chips Diamond the bets. The how dare they do what's fiscally responsible? Sixers betting above the rim. Or are they not a fraud? Did you watch that game a couple of nights ago? Oh, Steph Curry was out there begging for his life. Someone come please help me. Fred Van Vliet give me the In business. In game to live the all access. You can take the money line. And me and me had to go to San Jose too. It was small play on San Jose. I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Ben should Prime be really time. happy because his fraudulent conference got a couple extra teams in, uh, instead of the past. There the he is. Boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The Pat McAfee Show. You know, I did it once my sophomore year, but really after that North Carolina game, the calls. I stuck with it after that game, so you, you could take some some pride in that. Here we go. After that, after that game, I kind of stuck with it. Coach Whipple's like, you know, it doesn't have to be cold to, to rock the club, so I wore them since then on out. Uh, so you know, it worked out well that game. It just kind of felt more comfortable. Stuck with it. I mean, I feel great. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Let's take a look at the teams possible for Durant. That at least we're hearing. And this could change too, but Phoenix is at the top because DeAndre Ayton's name has come up. The the a priori thing you have to establish here with all of these spots is, does the trade leave the team capable of making the NBA Finals after the trade? And if that answer is no, Durant is not going to go. He's not going to do it. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. All right, betting above the rim here on a Saturday morning, the 8 to 10 slot for the first time this summer. We're going to be doing it for another month. James er, James and Shames, Shames and James here, the two faces on your screen to take you through the, everything you need to know through the NBA offseason right now. And Coach, we just talked a little bit about a big point guard move, the Hawks acquiring DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs sending out their all-star guard, giving him a chance to win, which he has said he greatly appreciates. That's why the Spurs are a family coach and wouldn't expect anything else. But let's direct your attention to another point guard that was on the trading block and found a new home yesterday after what seems like many years of speculation. Malcolm Brogdon, the Indiana Pacers guard, going to the Boston Celtics. The Celtics trading Aaron Neesmith, a 2023 first rounder, and Daniel Tice to the Indiana Pacers in exchange for Malcolm Brogdon. Coach, I love this trade. As soon as it broke, I was literally, I was leaving for the gym and I was walking out the door and I go, let's go. And my roommate's like, what, what, what? And I'm like, Malcolm Brogdon's on the Boston Celtics. It's incredible. What an amazing fit. Quickly, my thoughts, Coach. This is a team that needed a driving point guard in the NBA Finals. They needed someone who could penetrate. They needed someone who could dish the ball and who was not going to get bogged down by the defensive pressure of the Golden State Warriors. Malcolm Brogdon is that guy. A big guard, very physical, and one of the best drivers and finishers in the NBA with both hands. I love the fit, not to mention he can space the floor as well. Alongside Marcus Smart with Derek White coming off the bench, the Celtics are a scary team to keep my eye on right now. 
Yeah, he a thickum boy. I mean, I mean, speaking of thickum, shame. You look kind of little brolic in that shirt today. So you must have been doing. Gee, you oh, must thanks. have been doing your thanks, chest bro. and your traps. You know. So I got you, bro. <laughs> now, so listen. When it comes down to Brogdon, okay, this is a great bit. Uh, his ability to get to the basket, the fact that he is a pretty good rebounding guard, getting about. 4.2 rebounds per game over the course of his career. 38% shooter from three. Has struggled since leaving uh, Milwaukee. He shot 40, 39, 43 from three. Hasn't shot over 37 at Indiana. But this goes to a role now where he becomes your choice. Does he become the sixth man and bring him off the bench or De- with Derek White? Or does he become a starter next to Marcus Smart? You bump Jalen Brown to a three. Then you move uh, Tatum to a four. Robert Williams at the five. Bring Al Horford off the bench. So good decisions for Ime Odoka uh, here in regards to getting Malcolm Brogdon. But here's the thing it does, okay? And this is the biggest thing. To me, it puts Marcus Smart on notice. Because if you're doing that foolishness and you're chirping at officials and you're having them bad shooting games like you had a couple of them in the finals, you could just say, you know what? That's okay, Marcus. Sit your behind down right here next to me. And you could bring in Malcolm Brogdon, who is a capable scorer, who has scored 16 points per game in his career, a better shooter, Mm -hmm. a better finisher around the basket than Marcus Smart, this is a sneaky good trade by Brad Stevens without giving up anything. I mean, Daniel Feist. I mean, a broom may be worth more than that in Boston. <laughs> yeah, Coach, I was very happy to see that the Celtics did not have to give up much. And yeah, Malcolm Brogdon, also a plus defender as well, and certainly can, can guard physical players or bigger physical players just like Marcus Smart. So a really good pickup for Boston. Also adding Danilo Gallinari yesterday as he gets bought out from the Spurs after the DeJounte Murray deal. I think that is another fantastic pickup for the Celtics just from a regular season floor spacing perspective. But the theme of the day is point guards coach and Jalen Brunson is at the top of everyone's mind right now inking a four five, four year $104 million deal with the New York Knicks. Of course, Rick Brunson, his father, becoming an assistant coach, and Jalen joins the organization right afterwards. And now the Knicks are looking at a pretty nice young core, three lefties in that starting lineup, which I don't know if that has ever happened in NBA history with three starting players all as lefties. But that's an interesting fit for me, coach. I still am a little skeptical. I think the Knicks need one more move for that move to make sense, if, that, if, if you understand what I'm saying there. See, you know what? Th- th- this is the problem, James. See, you and I were getting all along great. And I was waiting for you to drop that bomb in there to get me all fired up. And now you <laughs> did. And you mentioned Jalen Brunson. I, listen, folks, I want people to understand this, okay? I love Jalen Brunson. I love his game. I love his toughness. He's a Villanova guy. I'm a huge Jay Wright guy. I've known Jay for a, a while. There are a couple of guys locally around here. But the amount of money, Lord have mercy. I mean, he has CMB, cash money brother. He got that bag. Good for him. <laughs> but now but now we'll see. You know why, Shames? Because if this is it, this is Amari Stoudemire again. This is Julius Randle again. You know what I'm talking about? When the Knicks finally have money to go get somebody, they strike out left and right, and they got to settle for the next class. Now, there's been a lot of people talking big about him. Derek Harper, former Nick, probably, you know, I would argue Jalen Brunson is the best Nick point guard since Derek Harper played on those 1990s <laughs> championship Nick teams uh, with Ewing and Oakley and Whoa. Stark, so on and so forth. You know, I what about don't Raymond bring Felton? up stuff on more. Ray, Raymond hey, Felton, bro. Was good. That boy was good for 40 games. And I know you're not bringing up Mr. I Eat Vaseline, Stephon Marbury. Don't bring up that brother either. Or Steve Francis. Or Chris Childs. Or Charlie Ward. Or I can go on. I mean, the uh, best yeah. we may have had was Jeremy Lin for six weeks. See, look at me. You got me all distracted already talking about the Knicks. <laughs> but I'm going to say this. He, he's a leader. He's going to help. But you're right, James. What 
is the next move. I trashed him on draft night. I trashed him when DeJounte Murray went to the Hawks. And I'm going to keep coming at him. Evan Fournier, Julius Randle. Watch those two guys. One of those two needs to be moved because especially Randle, if you want to plug in Obi Toppin, they resigned Mitchell Robinson, four for 60. A little too much money, but you had to pay him. And Hardenstein, the kid they got from the Clippers, is probably one of the better under-the-radar free agent sightings as a big, shoots 46% from three, yep. limited shot volume. And he's also second in the NBA on defensive field goal percentage, uh, only allowing, I think, 47% of dunks or layups What he is the closest defender. That's a really good depth signing. New York's got pieces they got to trade away to veterans and let these young kids grow together. I agree with you, Coach. I actually really liked Isaiah Hartenstein signing. I was surprised that the Clippers picked Ivica Zubac over Hartenstein, as it would seem, choosing to bring back Zubac and not Hartenstein. But great pickup for the Knicks there. Another point guard on the move we briefly mentioned at the top of the show, John Wall, finding himself a deal with the L.A. Clippers now. The Clippers became a co-favorite for the title at the time. They've moved back a little bit now as the Boston Celtics have become the sole title favorite right now. But, Coach, what do you make of John Wall going to the Clippers? I really like that fit. I'm a little skeptical about you know Wall's level of productivity at this point in his career, but from a fit perspective, he's going to have the ball in his hands, and he's with two wings who can work off ball and space the floor. I really like that for LA. Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start doing the John Wall right now. Remember, the, remember when the John Wall was big back in the day? Can can, can you get the coach young, please? Like, John you got that, that graphic. John, 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 you know, John. Wall. You got the little John, John Wall. You got the little John Wall going. Listen, I like the signing because if you look at mm. it, if you get Kawhi back and engage. You know what? John Wall isn't the number one scoring option. That's Kawhi. He's not the number two scoring option. That's PG-13. You could argue that Marcus Morris may be a bigger scoring option. So think about what you have just done with the Clippers. You could roll out John Wall, Paul George, Kawhi, Batum, Zubak starting lineup, and then go second team of Reggie Jackson, Norman Powell, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, and I haven't even talked about Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard and Amir yep. Coffey. Like, what? I mean, I mean, yeah. I feel a little John. What? I mean, I got a little, a little something <laughs> in my throat, so I can't do it well today. But y'all get my point. The Clippers, folks, people keep talking about the Lakers, including our guy Kevin Walsh. But you got to admit, folks, if, if John Wall is, is ready to go and Kawhi is engaged, you could argue – that the L.A. Clippers have the most depth in the NBA and should seriously be considered the biggest threat to the Warriors and the Phoenix Suns if KD goes there. I agree. They match up the best against those two teams versus anyone else in the conference. And that depth, it always seems to be a theme for the Clippers. As long as I can remember, they have always been one of the deeper teams in the NBA and a huge asset for them. We will see if it translates to some playoff success here. But, Coach, we talked a little bit about John Wall there. Let's talk about his former backcourt mate, John Wall was once in Washington, and it seemed like he was going to be stuck there for a while. Now he has found his way out. But Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal staying there for another five years, Coach JY. Bradley Beal signs a new contract, five years, $251 million, a freaking ridiculous amount of money. So I understand why he's wanting to stay there. But, Coach, this is a guy who's been talking about winning for the past few months now, and it felt really different this offseason, like he was finally going to find a new home. But... The Wizards sign him. He he takes that bag, you know, with pleasure. I personally don't really like this for either side. I, of course, Bradley Beal securing that amount of money is nice, but from Washington's perspective, they're not getting over the hump here. They could have restarted. You know, you got Johnny Davis now. Where's his minutes going to go here with Bradley Beal coming back? It's just a really weird move for all sides here, Coach, and kind of feels like a bit of a force. Okay, <laughs> man, listen. Bradley Beal did talk about wanting to win. <laughs> You know where Bradley Beal won? In the game of life. Because he just got yeah. $50, $50 million a year. He can kick back in the D.C. area, you know, make that money. But listen, the big thing about this is don't come out here and say that you want to win. And, I, and that's what I don't like. You know what you say, James? I want to take care of my family. I got This is my mm -hmm. last big contract. I want to take care of my family. I've been loyal to this organization since the day they got me. I'm going to take the back. And honestly, no one's going to knock him. So for me, 
the, if there's a winner and a loser, I think this is in the same case. He's a winner because he got $251 million. He secured his family's future forever and ever. But the Washington Wiz, uh, Miz, uh, Wizards just signed up for five years of complete and total mediocrity because they have no one to <laughs> surround him with. Well, I mean, Johnny Davis yep. is a nice part. You already traded KCP. You, you're going to try and move Kuzma. What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to surround him with Porzingis and Daniel Gafford? I mean, I mean that's laughable what, what they're going to bring. But, hey, at the end of the day, I, I, I keep coming back to my, my, my letters. CMB, cash money brother. Boy, go get that bag, son. Cash is king, Coach J.Y. No one knows that better than Nikola Jokic, too, who signed the largest deal in NBA history this week, around $280 million for Nikola Jokic, staying with the Denver Nuggets. Not super surprised there. And then, of course, we mentioned it as well, Zion Williamson re-upping with the New Orleans Pelicans. Another five years for Zion. He's getting about $250 million as well, $230 million as well. And then a couple other guys we got our eye on, Coach. Mm. Zach Levine, mm. uh, John Morant re-signs with Memphis. He gets extended there. And then Devin Booker, too. So a lot of the big mm. names re-signing with their current clubs, Coach. Maybe not a lot of marquee free agents that still might be on the move here, but a few teams locking down their homegrown stars. And you always love to see that, unless it's Washington. Keep it right here. We're sticking around for you, big dummy. JY's got a good one loaded up for you after the break here. <laughs> see Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. We'll see how it plays out. Buffalo's Football going full right circle. Now. All their chips Diamond the bets. The table. How dare they do what's fiscally responsible? Sixers first. Betting above are they a the fraud rim. Or are they not a fraud? Did you watch that game a couple of nights ago? No, Steph Curry was out there begging for his life. Someone come please help me. Fred Van Bleek giving me the In-game business. In-game live the all access. You can take the money line. And they only had to go to San Jose, too. They were small players in San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In-game live. Ben should be Prime really happy time. because his fraudulent conference got a couple extra teams in, uh, instead of the past. There he is. Boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. Yes, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever on the face of it. How could you have two teams on the West Coast playing the Heartland? Playing against, you know, in Chicago against Northwestern or playing Ohio State in Columbus or going up to Ann Arbor and playing Michigan or East Lansing with Michigan State. It's going to happen here. Why? Because money dictates here. Only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
All right, betting above the rim here, and it's time for you, big dummy. JY, tell us who is the winner of the award this week and why it's the Utah Jazz. No, no, no. It's not the Utah Jazz. It's the fans. You know why y'all getting it? Because some of y'all came at JY's neck and said, what am I talking about? <laughs> about breaking up that team. I mean, you want to keep that team together? You want to keep that team? Who, you know, number one seed? Nope. Get dumped. You know, second round, home court advantage? Nope. They get dumped. You got Big Frenchie? Nope. You lose. Donovan Mitchell? <laughs> nope. You lose. Mike Conley? Nope. You lose. Quinn Snyder, nope, you lose. You know who won this offseason? Quinn Snyder, because he know what the hell was going on, and he got up on out of there. So you know what, Utah Jazz fans, when you come at me and say, we, 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 we want to run it back. Boy, what are y'all smoking? Yeah, they must have some of that, that legal stuff out there in Utah. Well, I don't, I don't think they do. That may be Colorado. <laughs> that ain't legal out there. States. Yeah, but, yeah. Know, all right, <laughs> but, but if, it's, if it's illegal, y'all need to get it legal because y'all suckers don't know what you're talking about here. Utah Jazz, you had to break this up. You want to keep that crew together? Man, that's like trying to keep Menudo back together. Oh, uh, shoot, I just showed, showed my age. That's like keeping the 98 degrees together. All right, I listen to 98 Degrees and Millie Vanilli when, I'm, when I was younger. But I don't care. This isn't about me. This is about you. It's about you guys that you want to keep. I'm hitting the table. I'm so fired up. So I'm going to stop now before I hurt myself. I may almost broke my hand. But I'm saying to you right now, Utah Jazz fans, ha, 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 Joke's on you. Quinn Snyder, gone. Big Rudy, gone. Donovan Mitchell, about to be gone. Mike Conley saying, please, God, get me up out of here. Utah Jazz fans for coming at JY's neck. You ain't winning, you big dummies. Oh, JY, I'm trying to reel you in right now, but it's been real tough. Don't let JY get fired up about the Utah Jazz. It's never going to end well for them. Keep it right here. Hour two coming up, betting above the rim.